Welcome to College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton by Hilton. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. How will number four respond? That is the question tonight. Wake Forest taking the field. Their home building here in Winston-Salem. But Clemson coming off of the loss last week at Death Valley to Pitt. We'll see tonight. It is drama. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wachus and alongside Brock Hewitt. Allison Williams will join us from the field in just a moment. I'm interested. You're interested to see how Clemson responds. Dabo Sweeney seemed very confident with how his team prepared this week for tonight's game. He thought they responded well in practice. I guess we'll see it on the field. I think they will. This is a battle-tested team over the years, and this year in particular, six of their ten games this season have been one possession affairs in the fourth quarter. They happen to have won five of them. Fell just a little bit short a week ago. I don't think there'll be any question about their emotion or response tonight. Their quarterback still very much in the Heisman conversation. Deshaun Watson, though, as good as he can be at times, there are negatives. I'm excited to watch him. He is, we know, prolific in his stats, in his run-pass nature. He is one of the great elite dual-threat guys. He's going to be drafting. I think he's going to be right near a first-round draft pick. You love the yards and production, but the question and what's been the bugaboo for Clemson this year are the turnovers. And 26 interceptions over the last two years. It was three a week ago against Pitt, two in the red zone that were tremendously costly. And I can't wait to watch Deshaun get into it tonight because I think he can get himself right back in the Heisman race with a big game tonight. Watson ready to go. Clemson ready to go. There is a recipe, though, for Wake Forest to pull the upset. Allison Williams will have that story in our kickoff when we return. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back in Winston-Salem with Wake Forest getting ready to take on fourth-ranked Clemson and the Demon Deacons do so with a change at quarterback. Just announced redshirt freshman Kyle Kearns will start this game. Regular starter John Wolford dealing with a number of injuries. He is not 100%, so Kearns will start, but Wolford is available. But really, this doesn't change what Wake Forest must do to win the game. They have to run the ball, and they've done so much better this year, averaging more 50 more yards per game compared to last year. And they can't hurt themselves. Okay, no penalties. They've been good in that department this year, averaging just about 35 penalty yards per game. And they have to find a way to take care of the football and not turn it over. They're plus nine, the best turnover margin in the ACC after last year. They were last in that department, negative 13. So it's a recipe any head coach will tell you is necessary to win. Take care of the football. Don't hurt yourself and run the ball well. And guys will have to do so with a different man in charge leading that offense. Well, there's no question, Allison, in spite of the fact that Dave Clawson's team is making a quarterback switch out of necessity tonight, Brock. They play around the quarterback, not through the quarterback. Correct. So they do have a chance even with a quarterback change. Changes zero of the game plan. Now, Wolford's a better scrambler, and they beat Virginia largely with his legs, nearly 100 yards rushing. But they will be committed to time of possession, committed to running the football. And if they get this done tonight, it will be because of their defense. Clemson won the toss and deferred to the second half. So Wake will start with the football and a short kick from Greg Hugel. And that will come down at about the one-yard line. And return close to the 16 by John Armstrong. Well, there may be some opportunities for Wake offensively. Well, they sure were a week ago for Pitt, and they took full advantage of it. A veteran team and Nathan Peterman, a senior quarterback, that looks off the veteran tankers lay a corner. This is three deep coverage. He's got deep third, and he guesses, and boy, did he guess wrong. And this is a multiple bust. And too many of these for Brent Venables. He was upset. Pitt won the game. They made the plays. But it was the mental errors and breakdowns that were really disappointing for Clemson on the defensive side of the ball. I expect a much different effort, a cleaner effort against a crew in Wake Forest that doesn't do nearly the shifts and movements they saw a week ago. Now they'll start it on the ground with a true freshman, Cade Carney. And he may pick up a yard before he's driven back. So it will be second down and long for a four-star recruit. At quarterback in Cade Carney, but this is an offense that has been challenged even when John Wolford was healthy and playing as the starter. 61% run. And they'd probably love 70, 75% on a brisk, windy night and control time of possession, avoid the negative plays, and what an opportunity for the red, redshirt freshman from San Ramon, California. 
conservative on second down. And it will be third down and about seven as Ben Bulware wrapped up Kane Carney after a gain of three. The ball popped out, but the officials rule that Carney was down. Well, if Clemson wins tonight, they will play in the ACC championship game. It would be the fourth ACC championship game under Dabo Sweeney. Of course, they had a chance to clinch it last week as well and lost to Pitt. Louisville needs help. They need Wake Forest to win tonight and over in the Coastal. If Virginia Tech wins their rivalry game with Virginia, they are in. North Carolina would need some help. Third down and seven to start. And they run right into the heart of a Clemson defense that gets a stop. Kendall Joseph there to stop Cade Carney. So talk about playing around your quarterback. That is three up the middle handoffs to start the game for Kyle Kurtz. Brent Venables get used to it. And big boys up front. And that's Dexter Lawrence and Carlos Watkins. 650-some pounds in the middle. The two D-tackle spots for Clemson. And conservative. Conservative by nature. That will be the plan tonight. As I said two minutes ago, they will win this game. Not on the strength of their offense, but a very veteran defense that hopes to create turnovers and win the field position war. Dom Maggio is a true freshman punter, and it's a line drive. Ray Ray McLeod lets it bounce sideways, and it takes a bit of a Clemson hop close to midfield, only a 29-yard punt. So talk about field position. Well, Deshaun Watson, he would take this all night, starting at his own 49-yard line. Although last week against Pitt, a bit of a microcosm of what he is. He can put up mind-numbing numbers at an ACC record 580 yards passing, but three interceptions, two thrown in the end zone, the last of those three when Clemson was driving to clinch the game, and they ended up losing to Pitt on a game-winning field goal. Goldman tripped up, but picks up about six on first down. Well, this is what I would like to see. I'd like to see them run tonight. I'd like to see Goldman get his 16th 100-yard game of his career, which would be a Clemson record. And I think they've got to be committed to it, not just for this evening, but for the rest of the season. Wide receiver screen to Artavis Scott. It'll be third down and about five for Clemson. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. And you see Wayne Gallman, he's been prolific in his career. Mike Williams is a key in this situation right here. Third and short, he is a mismatch. I love Duke Edge of four, so does the NFL as a pass rushing in. And Markel Lee, the leading tackler, the voice right in the middle. Mike Williams at the bottom of your screen, widest to the near side right. Brad Watson plays zone as it's a check down. And right at the first down marker, Gallman is brought down by Thomas Brown. We'll see where they mark the football. Maybe just an inch or two shy, as it looks like they may bring the chains out to measure. And there's some of the advancement for Dabo Sweeney with his third year starter now at quarterback and getting to your checkdowns. You'll hear NFL guys say, hey, can you see the whole field? And how about progressions? And can he get to those checkdowns? And Deshaun feeling that pressure in the pocket. Gets off his perimeter throw, finds his checkdown. And puts now Dabo in a curious spot that I say go. I just watch an opponent who's going to do what tonight, who's going to play it as conservatively as they come. And I'm going to lean into a big physical offensive line and trust my signal caller to get it done. I think when Dabo Sweeney was looking at the laminated game plan card, he was already on his fourth down and one options. The offense never even looked over to the sideline. They were going for it, no doubt about it. Fourth down and a foot on the opening possession for Clemson. Ballman up the middle. He's got it in Miller. Inside the 20 and gone. Wayne Goldman. Fourth and one becomes six. What a difference a week makes. It was fourth and one last week. They couldn't get it. We watched Jordan Leggett come around. He seals that edge player. 
And you're in no man's land in a one-on-one -on -one with Wayne Gallman in space, and that's got to feel good. He's been unselfish. He's been patient. The numbers have not come for him this season. A tremendous start for Clemson in the run game. 29th career rushing touchdown for the redshirt junior Wayne Gallman. We wanted to see how Clemson would respond on the road after losing at home last week to Pitt. It's a pretty good start. Bob Wischusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams back in Winston-Salem. And Brock, at our production meeting last night, you said Wake Forest must survive the first quarter. They couldn't even survive the first three and a half minutes. And that's what Dave Clawson echoed as well to us yesterday. He knows what he's up against. The margin for error is incredibly slim with the just caliber of athletes they're going up against. And I love the commitment to the run. And you asked me in the open, how, how are they going to respond? What kind of emotion are they going to have? Well, they filled up this building with a lot of orange. I think you see a veteran team that wanted to get the taste, bad taste out of their mouth from last week. Armstrong this time will take a knee. It'll come out to the 25-yard line. And our first chance to say hi to Adnan Burke. Thanks very much. Into a very stiff breeze. The backup quarterback, redshirt freshman Kyle Kearns. His first throw of the night. And underneath picks up four yards to Chuck Wade. Although, Brock, thinking about the Pac-12 and how things look like they may shake out now, that's a big win for that Colorado program. It sure is, and it keeps USC's hopes alive. In Utah, lost as well. So a wide open Pac-12 South, and kudos to Mike McIntyre. Nobody saw that coming. In all of college football, there is nobody that said, oh, yeah, this is the year that Colorado turns it. Right. But his D coordinator, Levitt's a good one, and real, real credit to building that foundation strong in Boulder. Play action for Kearns. And there's a quick hitter. And breaking a tackle is Devin Pike, the tight end, about two yards shy of a first down. So it will be third down and two. It is windy. It was cold on that field. I went down there and tried to be a tough guy for five minutes, stood by the, the heater and said, let's get back up to that booth. I've had enough of the cold and the wind, and it's really blowing really one direction here, and it's going to be in Wake Forest's face this entire quarter. When I said weather the storm, I didn't just mean Clemson as well. You've got to handle these windy, brisk conditions. And the officials right now talking to Dave Clawson. I don't see a penalty marker that was thrown, so I'm not sure what this conversation was about. And I was embarrassed All for you. Five. Defense number 42. Penalty will be accepted. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. So there was a penalty marker down. And Wake is going to get the football, or the down back. So with Wake getting the down back, it's now second down and two. Alex Bachman in motion. Little zone read and getting very close to the first down marker is Matt Colburn, but he ended up underneath Carlos Watkins, which is not a good place to be. All 305 pounds of the fifth-year senior making the stop. Now it's third down and one and some tempo here for Wake. Wide receiver hits, dropped. Alex Bachman couldn't hold on. And Wake Forest goes from second down and two to punting on a three and out. Yeah, and that's devastating. That, that, you just cannot have that if you're Wake Forest. Just get, just get your first down. Just keep your defense, which is your strength, on the field. And that's a minus on the great sheet for the young kid. You'd love to see Bachman try to secure that reception outside, but Kern has got to do the best he can on a windy night to give his receiver a catch and run ball. Don Maggio couldn't even manage 30 yards into a very stiff breeze on his first attempt. And 
this one not much better. Flags down, though. It looks like Maggio may have been roughed. Dexter Lawrence, the true freshman defensive tackle, came through and made contact with the punter. That's a lot of inertia. You don't typically see many Five yards deep tackles. Running into the kicker. Defense number 90. Five yard penalty. First down. Big Dexter does have a couple block kicks this season. He's from right down the road a couple hours away in Wake Forest. And that personal protector is saying, are, are you kidding me? What, what is this 330 pound behemoth coming? And breathing right down my throat. He's got to have an awareness and a feel for where the punter is. Well, that's the turnover. That doesn't go down as a turnover on the stat sheet. Yep. But Clemson not only was about to get the football back, but it was another wobbly kick into a very stiff breeze that didn't even get inside the 35-yard line. So that was Deshaun Watson about to get the ball back, and that's Dabo Sweeney telling his true freshman, think, think about the opponent, think about the situation. Just didn't need it. A yard for Cade Carney. Austin Bryant made the tackle. Ben Bulware pushing the pile as well. And you're going to see a ton of this. We saw Wake against Florida State, and it was 80% run for a 61% run team as it is. You see Big Dexter making up for that. Uh, and he's going to be hard to move in the middle. But Wake Forest is committed to running between the guards. They don't have the speed to get out on the perimeter. They don't want to risk negative plays. So they will live with a yard in the cloud of dust. Here comes the blitz. They've got man coverage on the outside and unable to drop it into Cortez Lewis was Kearns. So it will be third down and nine. That's a pretty good throw. That's a is some zone coverage there and you're trying to hit that whole shot between the corner and the safety. Really good look here. There is no doubt that Cortez, the wide receiver, is feeling that safety breathing down his neck. But that's a good, aggressive, and I think confident throw into the wind. We wondered if Clemson would blitz at all this Wake Forest offense. And they're showing blitz on third down and nine. And now a false start. That's the right tackle, Ryan Anderson. False start, offense number 70, five-yard penalty, third down. Now you walk a little line here, and Dave Clawson said, I, I hope they blitz. Because if they just rush four, I don't know if we're big and strong and fast enough to beat them. But there's also something for Brent Venables on the other side. And that is our nature is to be aggressive. And you'll find coaches talk about this all the time, and rightfully so, 10, 10 games into this season. Right, I don't want to take away the very nature of my group. And Ben Bulware, who you just saw celebrating after that penalty, wants to be downhill and be aggressive. And frankly, he's at his best when he is. This time only a three-man rush. So Kearns with a check down. Cade Carney nowhere near the first down. And that time only a three-man rush. Clemson plays coverage behind it. Wise move. As without any speed to speak of for Wake Forest, there was no chance Carney would make it to the sticks. So again, it's a punt. Maggio barely got it away. It may have been tipped at the line. It does get past the line of scrimmage, so it will roll and be touched at the 40-yard line by Wake Forest. Chad Smith came from the outside and may have deflected the football. So in the end, Brock, it results in a 17-yard punt. And these Tigers came to play. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. Book at Hampton.com for a guaranteed discount. And in part by BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. If you're a member of the 1834 student campaign, a student organization at Wake Forest that educates and raises awareness among undergraduate students for philanthropic support, get to sign your name in the bell tower for all time. Well, I'm not sure this conversation is going to be met with the same kind of applause on the sideline for Wake Forest. Head coach, special teams coach, and personal punt protector. What are you looking at here? Uh, they know that not only penalties and turnovers, but that third phase, phase that special teams, can't be even. They've got to win it. 
and so far it's going the way of Clemson. Pop pass right up the seam. Jordan Leggett, there he goes. Into the secondary. One of the best tight ends in America for the second consecutive year on that semifinalist list for the Mackey Award. And here goes Clemson after a 32-yard gain right back up at the line. Wayne Goldman to the 15-yard line. Boy, they are on it tonight. This is the kind of execution he wanted. This is what Dabo expected. He loved his work week, thought his guys were upset. They were mad. And man, were they efficient this week at practice, and you're seeing it. A hitch to the outside to Mike Williams. He's inside the 10, out of bounds at the 6-yard line. That's a gain of 8 more. Maybe nine. It'll be second down and one at the six. And one on one in the red zone, it's over. If you're going to leave that big man one on one, they're going to throw hitches, they're going to throw slants, they're going to throw fade routes, and you're going to have a very difficult time matching with them. Wayne Gallman looking for touchdown run number two. It looks like at least he has picked up a first down. Markel Lee. Went for the piggyback ride, and he actually will be marked down. It looks like about a half yard shy of the first down. Oh, they gave him inside the five yard line, so it is first and goal. Remember the two red zone touchdowns last week. I would expect Deshaun to be incredibly sharp here. Careful with the football. Put yourself in position here. Those points are precious, and that ball security critical. Fade route, one on one, incomplete intended for Mike Williams. Amari Henderson was there in coverage. It'll be second down and goal. And they're going to move Mike Williams around a little bit, and that time to the field. And a one on one against a redshirt freshman, and you see the contact. And I loved what Dabo said. Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, the guy plays above the rim. Right, you're six foot two. That's great. You have nice length, but he has a, a real feel and understanding. Won't be surprised. They go right back to that matchup. Anderson got away with a fistful of jersey. Here's Goldman. It'll be third down and goal as he gets brought down at about the three yard line. And you hate to say eight minutes into a game, this is a must. But this is a must for Wake Forest with, with their offense and the challenges they have. And as prolific as Clemson is offensively, you have got to find a way to put that field goal team on the field for fourth down if you're Wake Forest here. This is one of those times because you got a one on one to the top of the screen to your go to guy. Timeout called by Dave Clawson. Sprinted downfield to call the timeout on defense. Huge third down and goal coming up for Clemson early in this game when we come back. Last week down inside the five yard line, it was throwing the football that was the strategy Run for it. Clemson. Now they've got it third down and goal from just inside Run the three. Run it. And during that timeout, I hope Dabo looked at all his big men and said, we're going to be in four down territory. And I want to run it. I know we can throw it in. We all know Deshaun can throw it in, but I would be committed to running the ball, not just for this night, but for the rest of the season as well. They started empty, and now they load up with Gallman in the backfield. It'll be a straight quarterback run, and walking into the front corner of the end zone is Watson. Wayne Gallman strung him with a block on the edge, and Deshaun Watson, only his third rushing touchdown of the season. But that's the big boy football you thought is. that you should see tonight from Clemson. It is, and it can come in different varieties. And this time, as you said, you pointed out, Gallman, he secures the edge, does his job, gets right to the thigh pads of Jabari Williams there. And we've not seen enough of that from Deshaun. And my hunch, much like JT Barrett, ran a ton for Ohio State. In these games that matter down the stretch, number four is going to find a way to get himself some carries. Last season, 12 rushing touchdowns for Deshaun Watson. That's only his third so far this season, but it's good for a two-touchdown lead for the Tigers early on. Back to Adnan.
Wow. Just wow. From Charlie Strong's standpoint, really, Brock, is there any way no. that a Texas head coach can have that kind of a season and lose to Kansas and keep his job? You know, the NFL coaches used to tell us, I went to six training camps, and they said, you're going to make the decision for us. You think we're the ones to cut you or keep you? You're the one that makes the decision for us. And I think, you know, in a situation of some unknowns right there, I think that makes the decision for those people in charge in Texas. Surprise onside kick from Clemson. And it's recovered by Hugel with a flag down. The place kicker with an onside kick that he recovers himself. But there is a flag down back near the 35-yard line. Was Clemson offside on their own kick? They were. So that is a major dodged bullet for Wake Forest. As Clemson will be penalized on what was a perfectly executed surprise onside kick. Ball traveled 10 yards, covered by the kicking team. However, there was offside on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty for a re-kick. And it's awfully close, and don't you love that? I'll raise my hand. I say I love that, Dabo. You have a chance as a head coach to dictate the emotion and the aggressiveness of your team. And you're just going to see here, I think it's just right in the middle. It is close, and there's times you get the benefit of the doubt. But as that line judge is looking right down the line, and you could see his eyes. Half a yard, not by much. And perfectly executed, but to play devil's advocate, why? Why not? Because if, you, I, go, if because I go ahead, 21 nothing on this team. They're coming back. And by the way, the way this game has gone through the first nine minutes or so, you will go 21 nothing on this team by kicking it off and playing defense. And I will also tell my team, I got your back, and we are in this thing to win, and they can play as conservative as they want, but I'm going to be aggressive on my end. John Armstrong. Pretty good return. Out to the 35-yard line. It was Greg Hugel, the kicker, that was there to help on the stop after a 32-yard return. And next Saturday at noon on ABC, it's the game. Michigan, Ohio State from the shoe. The Buckeyes have won. Four in a row and 11 of the last 12 against the Wolverines also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN and last season I'm sure one of the most bitter results in the mouths of all Wolverines and their fans as Urban Meyer's team dominated in Ann Arbor how good was that ball today from both of them tested playing in some tough conditions put themselves in position for it to mean it all next weekend Matt Colburn looking for some running room and picks up three. So you don't. Bill Joseph made the stop. You don't like that onside call. It's unnecessary against this opponent to me if you're Clemson. But there's Just no kick risk. it off and play defense. You don't even need to blitz based on what we saw on tape with a redshirt freshman quarterback getting the start. I would think that that would be, if you don't recover that onside kick, unnecessarily giving a plus field opportunity to an opponent that you have dominated through the first yeah, 10 I minutes love, or so. I love the risk, and I love what it tells your team about your mindset and your aggressiveness this evening. Another handoff to Colbert. Carlos Watkins tripped him up after a gain of two. It'll be third down and five. You got to pay this off. And if you wake for us, these are the moments right now. These are half twos. Ten minutes into a game. If you want to keep it close, if you want to give yourself a chance in the final 50. Four-man rush. Kearns to the outside. That may have been intercepted. No, they say incomplete as it went through the arms of Cordray Tankersley. He couldn't scoop it up, but it is another Wake Forest three and out. That is a tough, tough throw. Whether you're a redshirt senior or a redshirt freshman making your first start, you can see the eyes of Tankersley there in zone coverage the whole time. Venables loves it. Tankersley had a big game against these guys a year ago with a pick and two pass breakups, but his eyes were looking at the quarterback the whole time. A quick out. It was nearly a disaster. The only first down so far for Wake Forest was when 
Dom Maggio, the punter, was roughed. Ray Ray McLeod drops the football, picks it back up, and gets brought down at his own 31-yard line. This is the worst field position so far for Clemson, and they're still across their own 30 when we come back to Winston-Salem. A brisk and a blistery evening here in Winston-Salem. The wind's certainly having an impact on this football game, especially in the punting game. Now, field level, it's windy, but it's come in gusts. My most recent reading said about 19 miles an hour. But higher up, it is a steady and strong wind. You can tell the flagpoles that are highest up around the stadium have not stopped all evening that is where the wind is the strongest so while it has certainly come at times field level and it's definitely stronger on the Clemson side I'll tell you the Wake Forest side a little bit more protected from that wind uh, the punting game I think is where you're going to see the biggest impact well, Allison the first three punts of the game into the wind Brock for Wake Forest 29 yards 16 yards on a deflection and 30 yards no good Wide receiver screen caught by Deion Kane. And that's a good one-on-one -on -one tackle by Brad Watson. That's a gain of only a yard and a half on first down. And there are a bunch of NFL guys here, a bunch of scouts and folks that I saw, and this kid's going to be right in the middle of that conversation this offseason. I love the way he's handled it. And he's had the wind at his back, but you've not seen his ball move very much. Watson, this time on a slant, and another short tackle is made about three yards shy of the first down on Ray Ray McLeod by Markel Lee, so it is third down and three. These are the situations where it's been number seven. Four or five times against Pitt last week, trying to find Mike Williams in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Use his big frame. C.J. Fuller is the back to the left of Deshaun Watson. Watson again, a slam. Again, it's caught. This one for a first down to Deion Kane. Across the 50, so Clemson right back where they were on their first couple of possessions that's, in plus territory. That's a big time throw. That's Markel Lee. That's a free rusher coming right at you, and you're going to get hit in the jaw. And again, you just don't see that ball wiggle in the wind at all. It cuts through the wind. This is how you judge arm strength. A toss to C.J. Fuller. Six more. To the Wake Forest 43, Duke Edge of four, who is also an impact player. And we'll keep our eyes on number 53 because he has a matchup you think he can win tonight. But he's got to get in third and six, third and eight, third and ten. He's got to get into those passing situations where he can take advantage of Sean Pollard, the true freshman on the other side, 76. for Watson he's looking for the home run ball he's got man-to-man -man coverage and it's incomplete that was Brad Watson tracking Deion Kane now it's third down and four and that's tough with the wind and Kane's a go-to guy touchdown every four receptions nine this season leads the Tigers but I would say putting more air on it but then you are running the risk of that ball doing just that sailing away what's harder into the wind or throwing downwind Ooh, I think a go route downwind is as hard or harder than throwing into the wind as long as you've got the arm talent in the snap in that tight spiral. Here comes a Wake Forest blitz and Watson able to beat it. Getting loose is Mike Williams. Another big time throw with the pressure coming right up the middle by Deshaun Watson. QB's best friend. Just throw it out there. Just throw it in the vicinity of that guy especially on a slant route high low that time behind just does not matter he'll come down with it Watson on a keeper the zone read works to perfection and he picks up seven down to the 14 yard line Brad Watson the corner Stayed home and helped on the stop. At best point, he sure reads it. You can see the eyes the whole time of Deshaun looking right at Wendell Dunn, the defensive end. Knows he's got the quickness and patience to ride that fake. Been careful with that banged up shoulder to run. Throwing caution to the wind in every way tonight. C.J. Fuller may have lost a yard. Back to the 15-yard line. Jesse Bates on the tackle, so... 
Another chance in the red zone for Wake Forest if they can get a stop on third down and four. And it's third down and it's red zone. And you're either going to use number seven here at the bottom on slant routes or fades, or you're going to use him as a decoy trying to get the coverage rolled his way. He's in a one-on-one -on -one to the bottom. Ninth play of the drive, and Clemson so far three for four on third down. Watson will fade one looking for Mike Williams. He's got it. That's a Clemson touchdown. Not fair. Nice thing, Bobby, as I've said to you as the season's gone on with some of these good teams, and we've had the good fortune of seeing seven of the top eight teams, and there starts to get tendencies when you're an elite team. And the tendency is in a one-on-one, -on -one, you take advantage. There isn't anybody that can cover you. And a little surprise, Mike Elko told us yesterday, D coordinator of Wake, that he was going to roll over the top of Mike Williams. Not going to give him that kind of access to make you pay. But the big man sure is. And there's another kick into the All-State Good Hands Nets. Celebrating its 12th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. All-State makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked to date all state has contributed millions in scholarship funds do the jets need anybody that can catch touchdowns well i would say that my football team the jets according to tony elliott could definitely use maybe the next Keyshawn johnson or if all sean jeffrey was available and those are the two names that tony elliott compared mike williams to when we talk to the offensive coordinator, one of the offensive coordinators for Clemson this week, and you bring up Keyshawn Johnson, you bring up Alshon Jeffrey, Byron Mike Williams, I would accept those comparisons. Yeah. <laughs> and then some. Yeah. Think about this, too. This is a team that was fighting for the national championship last year without him. That's right. He broke a bone in his neck when he collided with the base of the uprights on the first drive of the season last year and was redshirted for the year so this offense which was unbelievably good last year for Clemson could have been even better with Mike Williams no chance on a return for John Armstrong another update from Adman Surprisingly close between Alabama and Chattanooga as it takes Alabama early into the second quarter to take the lead. It was an instantaneous lead taken in this game for Clemson. And now Wake Forest finds themselves in a three-touchdown hole still in the first quarter. An end around it to Barry Hines for a yard. See where Clemson has been so dominant this year in the first quarter is they were a year ago. It's 20 to nothing in this matchup a year ago. That was not even with a redshirt freshman making his first start for Dave Clawson under center. And now Clemson will call a timeout on defense. Well, this is a Wake Forest team that we spoke with Dave Clawson about the fact that he is continuing to build this program. You can see 21 to nothing, but you can also see a little six and four next to Wake Forest. Their record this season, they are already bowl eligible. And that was no small accomplishment for this group. They want to win every game, and we talked to him about that. But he took over a team that was three and nine in each of his first two seasons, but he was part of a rebuilding project at Fordham, at Richmond, at Bowling Green. Now here with Wake Forest, he's been through this before. And they've already doubled their win total through his first two seasons. And he knew exactly what he would be up against. And if style points matter at all, they had Louisville. They were up on Louisville in the fourth quarter last week, 12 to 10. I mean, they hit, they harassed, they bothered Louisville throughout the game. A very different story tonight in their own building as Clemson is dictating in every phase. Swing pass to Cade Carney. Dropped it. So now it will be third down and nine. And they're just not equipped and built to come back from deficits like this. Not right now. I think in the years to come, Dave Clawson is going to open this thing up. And they're going to get 
Kendall Hinton, Hinton back next year, their most dynamic player, a dual threat quarterback himself. Kyle Kearns making the first start of his very young career. And John Wolford, who is out tonight, beat up and beat up this season. Tall task against this speedy defense. Trying to throw it all over the field. Clemson brings a four-man rush. Lobbing it down the sideline is Kearns. And that's incomplete. Great coverage by Mark Fields. And it looked like Brent Venables was looking for offensive pass interference on Cortez Lewis. <laughs> and Coach Brooks trying to give him some uh, some insight and some intel. And they want the offensive pass interference. You can see it. I showed you on tape. Brent's pretty good getting up and down the sidelines. He'll be screaming and yelling on those goal routes. And this is a get right night for his defense. He runs a half marathon during the game. So Maggio, who has been busy into the wind, and with that win, not effective. And he gets away another kick. This one, probably the best so far. That one spirals to Ray Ray McLeod. And he is able to bring it out to about the 43 yard line. What field position Clemson has had here in the first quarter? A 38 yard punt. Seven yard return and Brent Venables. Boy, he will take one sprint after another foot down the sideline. Illegal formation by the kicking team. Keep an eye on Five Brent Venables in the here. Five yard penalty will be tacked on from the end of the kick. Looked like he started to First get down. dizzy. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Wow. Our camera's catching Brent Venables, who didn't quite seem himself there for a moment. Have you ever screamed so loud? You've seen stars? I know you've got five kids. You ever done that in the house? <laughs> Been running around and screaming and yelling. And you're right. He just had to catch himself there for a moment. Busy body on that sidelines. Deshaun Watson over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Mike Williams. Well, I like the fact that he bounced back yes. just as I will with my kids. You get through the head rush, yes. and then you immediately start yelling at them again. <laughs> So that was a good recovery by Brent Venables. We'll keep our eyes on him, though, to make sure that he's okay. Because he needed to steady himself there for a moment. Screen set up. Mike Williams breaks a tackle. He's about two yards shy of the first down. And we'll see if Clemson goes with tempo or if that takes us to the end of the first quarter. They do not need to run another play, but they have the wind at their back, so it might be worth running this third down play with the wind helping. And it may be worth Wake Forest rolling their coverage to make sure someone other than number seven beats you. And they will get one more snap off before the end of the quarter. Third down slant on time to Sean Watson to Artavis Scott. And Clemson will have the football inside the Wake Forest 40-yard line with a three-touchdown lead when we come back to start the second quarter. Taco Bell is a proud partner. College football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans at games all season long. And there are some Demon Deacons fans that are hanging in here in spite of the fact that their team is down by three touchdowns to start the second quarter. And Clemson has used flawless execution on both sides of the ball to take this three touchdown lead, averaging their own 43 in terms of starting field position. Here's Gallman. He picks up four. Demetrius Kent made the stop. It'll be second down and six. Now into this breeze for the first time. I don't think it's going to affect some of that execution that's been well, razor sharp. Running it, throwing the reads, everything there for Deshaun tonight. A little flip forward to Artavis Scott. And he's about three yards shy of the first down. Gets tackled at the 31 of Wake Forest by Grant Dawson and Josh Okonje. Third down at three. And if I'm a Clemson fan, Brock, when I saw... A couple of other teams inside the top four of the college football playoffs struggling a bit. Yep. This is the response I was looking for 
off of the loss last week. Come out and dominate an inferior team in terms of talent level. And they couldn't have been more dominant to the first 15 you're, minutes. You're doing it in a way that nobody, nobody, Florida State, Louisville, nobody has done this to Wake Forest this season. One-on-one -on -one to the bottom of the screen once again. Lake clock and one. And it looks like Dabo Sweeney will call a timeout to avoid <laughs> a delay of game. So we'll take the timeout as well. Third down and three when we return to Wake Forest. Wake Forest has run 15 total plays on offense, none across the 50. So Clemson has had more offensive snaps in Wake Forest territory than the Demon Deacons have had in the game. Hence the score, 21-0. Tigers on top, third down and three after the timeout. Goldman finds room up the middle, there he goes again. Bounces it outside, back inside, and inside the five-yard line. First and goal, Clemson. And this is the worst fear for anybody that's going to see Clemson down the stretch of this season. You know, Wayne goldman has been contained this year. That run game has been 86th in college football. Clemson's been settling to me too many times to be a one-dimensional animal. Not the case tonight with both the run and the pass going. Gallman up the middle. It'll be second down and goal inside the three. It's met by Josh Oconye. And again, it bears repeating. This is the same Wake Forest defense that was leading Louisville in the fourth quarter last week. Yeah, that hit, harassed, made Louisville one-dimensional. A veteran crew right now. Oh, they're feeling the brunt of all the athleticism and the execution of Clemson. Watson on a keeper. He cuts it back, and he's got his second rushing touchdown here in the first half. Another Clemson score. And they're on extra point away from a 28 to nothing lead. Yeah, Nick Saban, maybe Urban Meyer, Jim Harbaugh, and the rest are going to get a chance. And a couple of those men maybe tonight are already back home watching this game. And certainly the coaching tape that Saban's going to dig into is going to look at this and say, Ooh, this looks eerily familiar what they did a year ago when Deshaun Watson was a 4,000 yard passer 1,000 yard rusher when they had weapons galore and you just couldn't quite pin them down Knuckleball extra point goes through for Greg Hugel three rushing touchdowns out of the four scores for Clemson ESPN college football brought to you by Reese's peanut butter cups go for two and Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Well, how that, about that picture of the king and the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, alongside Arnold Palmer. We both recently lost. The Arnold Palmer Golf Complex here at Wake Forest features over 17 acres, five different chipping and putting greens, 24 practice bunkers, and the legend, the king, memorialized with the umbrella here on the field at bb &T Field. And you got to get on those six different putting greens yesterday instead of watching tape with us. Yeah, well, that's the kind of dedication I bring to the broadcast. Kick off into the wind. John Armstrong from the 11. And just squeezes across the 25-yard line as we bring you today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. I love Broadcaster Duck. Who is the only player in Wake Forest history to lead the NCAA in scoring? I'll have that answer coming up a little bit later on. So where do you go for answers now if you're Kyle Kearns? Again, a red shirt freshman, backup quarterback. Just trying to move the football and get a first Just down. Just get some first downs. Keep your defense on the sidelines. Just one first down, and that can be a penalty. Kearns gets out of the pocket, tries to extend the play. Throws one across his body, and it's incomplete high and wide of Stephen Claw. Well, Wake Forest had that lead going into the fourth quarter against Louisville, but of course Louisville then hung 34 on them in the fourth quarter last week. That was actually the second most points ever allowed in a quarter by Wake Forest. The most they've ever allowed, back with that great Clemson team in 1981, the Tigers put 35 on them. 
in a single quarter that year. Dragged down behind the line is Matt Colburn. Give Christian Wilkins his 12th tackle for loss this season. And I like this kid on tape. He's going to be a very good one. So he's a D tackle. You can see it by body type. Who's had to play in because of some injuries. And like a lot of these Tigers, has never complained. Has done whatever is asked. What Dabo has talked about, the self selfless nature. That servant kind of nature that they've got within the culture of this program. And first in tackles for loss on the season and adding to it. It's a beautiful play. Third down and 13. Kearns, the pocket starts to collapse. And he throws an interception with flags down. Cordray Tankersley picked it off. Flags down in the offensive backfield and a flag down in the defensive secondary. So we have a turnover, and it looks like two separate calls about 20 yards apart. Two fouls on the play. Holding defense number 34. Holding offense number 75. Those fouls will offset replay third down. So Kyle Kearns has the pick thrown to Tankersley wiped away. They live to fight another day. It's still third down at 13, but Wake Forest avoids the turnover. Yeah, this is a pretty obvious call here from Joseph, middle linebacker, right here. He's going to grab Serene, the tight end, as the big fella's trying to create an opportunity for his young quarterback. Only a three man rush, and still the pocket is pushed. Coming back to try to help out his quarterback as Cortez Lewis makes the catch, but short of the first down. He's brought down at the 32, needed to get to the 35. It's fourth down and three. So that's a gain of nine, and it will be another three and out for Wake Forest. Here comes the punt group, at least now for Don Maggio. He's got the wind at his back. That's called looking for the silver lining, in case you were wondering. Appreciate that. Fifth punt, but the first one downwind. When I think of you, Bob, I think silver lining. As do many. And Maggio with a wobbly kick. McLeod bobbles it on the fair catch and a giveaway. Wake Forest on the recovery. Chuck Wade recovers the loose ball as McLeod muffed the fair catch. We saw it earlier today, both the Michigan game, the Ohio State game. There was a whole lot more moisture in the air in both of those affairs, but it is a windy night. It is gusty, as Allison has said, and that makes life difficult on those returners. Maggio likes it, finally got some hang time and allowed that ball to knuckle in the wind. Ray Ray on the other side, when you're in that position against an opponent like this, you have to do everything to secure. You can't even be thinking anything else other than just find a way to secure that ball first, and I'm sure that's what Dabo's reminding him on the sidelines. So the first play offensively for Wake Forest in Clemson territory, courtesy of the Ray Ray McLeod fumble. Up the middle, driving for whatever he can get is the true freshman Cade Carney. Christian Wilkins brought him down after a gain of three. When you ask me what can you do, well, one of the things you're trying to do is play with a little bit of tempo. Play action. Kearns, he's looking for the end zone down the seam, and it's incomplete. Devin Pike had a step, but Kearns just barely threw it out in front a bit too far. Now it's third down at seven. This kid throws with some velocity. We, we've seen it. That, that last throw when he broke contain on the third down. Little rocket shot on the comeback. Four-star kid out of San Ramon, California. His dad played up at Oregon State. Pretty high-level recruit. Lots of arm talent. In his prep career, he threw for 6,300 yards and 70 touchdowns. And we were told that we would see the best arm of any of the quarterbacks for Wake Forest. But he's three for ten so far. Here comes the blitz on third down. It gets picked up. A chance to go to the end zone. Too far. Mark Fields, the corner for Clemson, was the only player that had a realistic chance to haul that one in. So it's fourth down and seven. And is this a little bit of a surrender here for Wake Forest kicking a field goal? You yes. like going for three or down no. by four touchdowns? Would you be going for it? I'd like to go for it, but I have no confidence right now. 
And you can see the head coach saying, what is the coverage? Because Stephen Claude, the wide receiver, saw the coverage, didn't even really finish the route. Well, Mike Weaver's been 81% so far this season. This from 42 with the wind at his back to at least get Wake Forest on the board. Line drive, plenty of leg. It is good, and Wake Forest does get on the board as they take the Ray Ray McLeod fumble and turn it into three. Clemson still with a comfortable lead. You can start off your NFL Sunday tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., the NFL Insider Sunday edition. All the injury news, the fantasy updates, the early breaking stories, and then at 11, it's the new Sunday NFL countdown crew that will take you right up until kickoff. Both shows streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Bob DeShusen, Brock Ewart, Wilson Williams, here in Winston-Salem. Wake Forest has yet to record a first down with their offense. They have one first down, but it's via penalty. Ray Ray McLeod gave them gift-wrapped field position with a muffed fair catch. But all Wake could manage was a field goal. Artavis Scott will take a knee here, and it will come out to the 25. Now the answer to our Aflac trivia question. <laughs> there goes the duck. And here is the answer. The only player in Wake Forest history to lead the NCAA in scoring, Brian Piccolo, huh. back in 1964. He can use some of those points tonight. No doubt about it. He was a good one. A legendary player, finished 10th in the Heisman voting that season. But back in those days, 1,100 yards of total offense was pretty good. Here's a shovel pass to Jordan Leggett to start off this drive for Clemson, and it's good for six yards. Yeah, you compare him to the quarterback on this Clemson team who had a 4,000-yard passing season, a 1,000-yard rushing season a year ago did Deshaun. <laughs> it's just a sign of the times, the difference in offenses, the tempo, the number of plays, and what an elite talent like Deshaun can do. It's a handoff to the true freshman, Tavion Feaster. Duke edge of four was the first there after a yard gain, so it'll be third down and three. Let's check in with Allison. Well, before the game, Brock was admiring uh, Clemson's heated benches that they travel to help these guys stay warm on a night that feels like 36 degrees. Something that's a bit easier to pack that helps their quarterback be comfortable out there, Deshaun Watson. Check out his jersey. It's custom made by the equipment staff here. They actually had the wool from the tearaway hand warmers that some of those guys were wearing on their backs there. They had it sewn into his jersey. And then within that is some pockets that they have the uh, heated hand warmers we're all using down here. And it allows him just to have his hands right there in front of him and keep them warm out there on the field. He's back to throw here on third and three. Down the sideline, broken up. Flags out, intended for Ray Ray McLeod, Amari Henderson. Looks like he'll be called for interference as Brock has asked for that hand warmer to be sewn into all of his suits moving forward. As the weather gets colder, oh, those quarterbacks, they get all the special treatment. High maintenance. Defense, number 10, 15 yard penalty, first down. So just when you thought Wake might get a third down stop, they pick up a 15 yard penalty for pass interference. Yeah, and this time Amari is away from Mike Williams. He's on the other side, but the slant and go, that third down slant's been so good, and he's just too early. That's an obvious call. You're impeding the receiver's opportunity to go back and make a play on the ball. Receiver screen caught by McLeod. He's across the 50. That's a gain of about six and a half on first down. Thomas Brown made the tackle. I really don't know how you stop Clemson. If they don't stop themselves, watching three or four of their different games at Florida State and last week against Pitt, they just have so many options spread across this field. Deion Kane uses the stiff arm, and he has a first down. That's a great example. I mean, that's a run play, and Wake Forest is bringing the house. And Deshaun Watson is so crisp in his decision-making that let me just pitch it out here. And it's what he did a ton last week. Unfortunately, it was three critical errors, three interceptions that proved so costly. They don't hurt themselves. They're really difficult to contain.
quick toss. And Feaster is hit. After a gain of two. Well, back to Deshaun Watson for a moment then, Brock. If his decision-making is that crisp, and he is that accurate with some of those high-percentage throws, where do the interceptions come from? Because we detailed that at the start, that he does throw a lot of picks and threw three big ones last week. Yeah, well, Mike Elko was saying, and they got him twice last year in this matchup, and he's the D coordinator for Wake Forest, is if you study them, most of them come from the underneath coverage. He has a wonderful feel for the safeties and where he wants to go, but there are times that that underneath coverage can get to him. And a couple more for Feaster. And that's not the case tonight. No, so, so quarterbacks are always taught. I was always taught from day one, the safeties. The safeties tell you everything. Run support, coverage. you got to see the safeties first. And based on his decision-making and everything in his hands and the run pass options and, and in protection, I think he is uh, he's aces at seeing those safeties. But it's the rest of the picture that I think has got to continue to grow. And when people have taken advantage of him, that's been about the only weakness this season. Tigers have missed on only one first down so far. Only a three-man rush. Long throw outside the numbers broken up. Intended for McLeod. Amari Henderson making up for that pass interference penalty. Gets a pass defense. Now it's fourth down and six. And it looks like Clemson will go for it. Now that's a little different animal. That has nothing to do with coverage. That's about trying to execute into this breeze. That is that deep out all the way across the field. And Deshaun has that arm. Finally, Henderson says, I'm able to make a play, put us in a fourth down. And Dabo says, that's fine, we're going to go. Into the wind might be too far to try a field goal. And it's hard to punt from the 35-yard line. Wake Forest sends a blitz. Wobbly pass, underthrown, and dropped on what would have been an interception. But on fourth down, Watson may have gotten lucky to drop the football as Wake Forest might have given up some field position had he not kept his feet so wake forest gets a stop on downs finally finally an opportunity for wake forest to get the ball back and well let's see if their offense can finally move the chains what a game it was earlier today between michigan state and ohio state and lansing lj scott one yard touchdown run five and a half minutes to go they go for two tyler o'connor Intercepted in the end zone. So Michigan State tried to take the lead. O'Connor with a minute 35 to go. Throws one up for grabs that's also picked off. And the Buckeyes are able to survive. With only a few weeks left in the regular season, we've got the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Comes your way again Tuesday at 7 Eastern here on ESPN. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom. As always, also available streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Kyle Kearns finds a wide open tight end Cam Serenade inside the 25 yard line. The first first down offensively not via penalty of the night for Wake Forest. And one of the first busts we talked about those opportunities tonight and Pitt took advantage of Clemson a number of different times mixing formations mixing different looks. Clemson has been on it tonight but that time as you see Serene, a guy that has battled injury all season. We asked yesterday, what's injured? Well, his whole body's injured, unfortunately, for Wake Forest. But they get their explosive play. They get their first down, and they do it with Clemson making a mental error defensively. Here's Cade Carney. Hurdles a man inside the 15, down to about the 12. That's good for another Wake Forest first down. Only a little bit of life in the eyes up. You lose containment there. Does Austin Bryant, number 91. Kate Carney, typically a between the tackles guy, but showing you the caliber of athlete he was. And important players getting hurt on both sides. We saw Serene go to the sideline, shake it up, and now holding that right ankle is Ben Bulware. First team all ACC last year with 138 tackles. And closing in on 90 tackles already this season. So that's a leader. That is an inspirational spirit player in the heart of that Clemson defense. He rolled that right ankle, so very slow to get up. That was a collision back there with Van Smith. His safety as the two of them are coming up to make the tackle. And you can see the legs get tangled there. What an athletic play from Carnett. 
When, when Ben Bulware was a kid, he and his brother used to race motocross in third grade. Third grade. He broke his arm so bad that the bone popped out. He got dirt in his bloodstream and got an infection. So his mom said, no more motocross. You have to play a safer sport like football. <laughs> and that's how he took football. <laughs> this is the safe version of the sports that Ben Bulware has tried during his life. And he's over on the sideline. They'll want him back. Wake in the red zone. Barney looking for room up the middle and find some. Down to about the seven yard line, a gain of five. So a team that couldn't pick up a first down the first four or five times they had the football. Looks like a completely different group as they are looking for their first touchdown. And now Serenay limping back in the game. You can see him spatted up. He is doing all he can to be on the field. It's been thigh, it's been ankle, it's been knee. He's the one difference maker, and he made the one play that finally allowed this offense just a little bit of ry rhythm and a little bit more confidence. Four down territory. Everything has got to go forward. Carney inside the five. About two yards shy of the first down as Kendall Joseph brings him down. So a big third down coming up for Wake Forest. And maybe fourth down to follow. Yeah, you're not settling for field goals now. And, and, and this play's got to go forward, and Brent Venables doesn't have his go-to guy and bullware on the side. This has been a group that has made their living Wake Forest in their run game, just pushing the pile and allowing the 220-pound Carney to do his best to drive it forward. They're 0 for 7 on third down. Carney gets to the one yard line gets to the goal line is he in no signal from the officials it looks like they have a mark down at about the half yard line but that's plenty good enough for a first down Kendall Joseph kept him out of the end zone but it's first and goal inside the one that is called BYOB be your own blocker there was you and the linebacker sitting in the gap and that was low pad level wins want to wins and Carney driving a powerful Joseph back. Carney again. Right at the goal line again. Wake Forest thinks he's in. And he is. That is a Demon Deacon touchdown. And that's one-on-one -on -one again for Brent Venables. The first time it was his middle linebacker. That time it's Jadar Johnson, the safety, the senior safety. And you get into those goal line and red zone situations, that's what you get. You get one-on-ones. And you can see Jadar Johnson, he's unblocked. He's coming up. And he's trying to bring what he can into that tackle. But Carney, the awareness to stretch the ball forward. And that's how Wake Forest makes their living. You can see the effort even as Phil Haynes, the right guard. He's driving the big fellow Wilkins into the end zone as well. They're going to review to see if he did indeed get into the end zone. Although Dave Clawson just saw up on the big board a replay that convinced him that it's a Cade Carney touchdown that would be his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. We'll show you the same replay that Coach Clawson just saw. Again, ruled a touchdown on the field. It certainly looks as if the football breaks the plane from that angle. After a review, ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So, Brock, this is an offense that put up 36 yards through their first 21 plays from scrimmage. Six plays, 64 yards on the touchdown drive. And it took one play. It took one play action pass, one explosive play to finally gain a little confidence on their end and put that Clemson defense back on their heels, a position they were not in for the first 25 minutes of this half. Mike Weaver tacks on the point after. 28 straight scored by Clemson, now 10 answered by Wake Forest. Bob Wischusen alongside Brock Ewer, upstairs, downstairs on the field, Allison Williams. Three and a half minutes to go before halftime. And all of a sudden, Wake Forest shows a little life if they've scored 10 straight. Artavis Scott from the five-yard line. Runs into a wall at about the 17. We'll check in with that man. All 
All right, Adnan, thanks very much. And Brock, Adnan mentioned the failed two-point conversion by Michigan State. Something we both had thoughts on as Wayne Gallman tries the right side. Flag down. If the play stands, it's good for an eight-yard gain. This is by far the worst field position for Clemson, and it's a holding penalty. Get a little worse. Holding number 75, offense. Half distance to the goal. First down. Being the expert analyst, I will defer to you about the two-point conversion, but we were at least of the same mindset. We were texting back and forth as that decision was made by Mark D'Antonio. I don't, I don't go for two. And those decisions are made, from what I understand, pre-drive. But you go into that drive and you have a stern conversation with your staff of what you want to do. And I think your defense had made Ohio State much too one-dimensional. Barrett was not getting anything going in the passing game. And for that reason, I would have tied it up instead of going for two. Octavius Scott gets bottled up at about the 13-yard line. I agree completely. I think if you are playing a game where you score a touchdown to make it 45-44. Yes, you go for two. Yep. You, you can't stop them. And then the decision is, well, if you give me number two in my building with one shot to beat them from the three-yard line in a game like that, I could certainly understand why you would go for it. But I don't go for it there, not the way their defense was playing. And that was actually something we were saying to one another before the play. Hunter Renfro with his first catch. And I'll just add this finally. Urban Meyer played that game conservatively. You heard Herbie say it a bunch going into it. He plays it conservatively, and he has a lead, right? He just was running JT Barrett on QB draw, and they couldn't get anything going in their passing game. Have you seen JT Barrett ever in his career less accurate with the football well, than he was today? In the game we did, he was under 100 yards passing, much like he was today. Well, he missed some simple pitch-and-catch throws. Third down at seven. Wake Forest brings the blitz. Deshaun Watson fires one. And that's incomplete, way up over the head of Hunter Renfro. So all of a sudden, a little spirit on that Wake Forest sideline. Not only do they get 10 straight points, but they force a three and out. And now it's Clemson's turn to punt into the wind, as this is the first time we'll see their punt group. And finally, Mike Elko gets to do what he wants to do. He wanted to blur that picture for Deshaun Watson pre-snap and post-snap, but you need third downs to do it. And check out that coverage. Everything in that coverage pre-snap to Deshaun said, I got that corner route. And you see that time, you know, the, the youngster get back underneath that corner route. It's big-time execution. Andy Teasdall barely gets it to midfield. Just across the 50-yard line, only a 30-yard punt. So now the wind affects a Clemson punt. As we take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings, brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We will say goodbye to Louisville as they lose in decided fashion on Thursday night. And now what happens with the rest of that top 10? Well, Oklahoma, I think, is who everybody is keeping a close eye on. A team and a conference that everybody wrote off. And shame on everybody that did that. Because if we learn anything about these playoff races down the stretch, the last two or three weeks, teams have made much bigger jumps than what Oklahoma is trying to do. Rolling right is Kyle Kearns, extending the play, and throws it away. So it will be second down and 10. What can Wake Forest do with the wind at their back? And great field position coming off of their first drive of the game, where not only they score a touchdown, but just got some momentum well, going and hit a few plays. And they're going to give it back to Clemson. Clemson deferred. So what you're thinking here is just get three. Just make it a two-score game. How much different does it feel going into halftime, a two-score game? What you were looking at mere minutes ago at 28 to 3. Carney patiently allows what little hold to develop that shows up and picks up three. Austin Bryant tripped him up, and it was Bryant and his stress fracture of his right foot at the start of the season that paved the way for Christian Wilkins to become the defensive tackle sliding out to defensive end. That's been the shuffle back and forth on that defensive line for Clemson. And we've got an injured Demon Deacon down on the play. And it looks as if that's Phil Haynes, the right guard and Dave Clossett is out there along with the medical staff.
Redshirt sophomore from Raleigh. And let's keep our eyes on 74. Right in the middle of your picture. And I think it was Bullware at the very end of that play as the pile is going down. That, that you just see the shot to the side of the head there. And those are the shots that, that and I can speak from experience. That I took some of the hardest hits in my life to my chin, right to my face mask, and it wasn't those hits. It was the glancing blows, the worst concussion I ever suffered. And I'm not saying that's what this is, but those glancing blows to the side of the head as those defenders come in can be just as dangerous. Well, if you were with us before, you may have seen a graphic we put up that the right side of the offensive line for Wake Forest has been the only part of their entire offense that's been there game in and game out. They have shuffled their skill position players, their backs because of injury. Now their quarterbacks tonight. As Phil Haynes and Ryan Anderson, the two that make up the right side of the offensive line, the two offensive players, and the only two that have started all 10 games this season for the Deeks on offense. They're going to start a lot more over the next two years. You talked about that rebuild for Dave Clawson. It was red shirting all those young linemen. And now Phil Ryan, both redshirt sophomores, got a lot of football ahead of them. Both have gotten better being on the field consistently this season. So it's Patrick Osterhag that takes over next to Anderson on the right side of the line. Here comes a Clemson blitz. Under pressure. Nowhere to go for Kyle Kearns. Kendall Joseph like lightning up the middle for a big loss. And Kendall Joseph may have taken Cade Carney on in the hole and lost that battle. He was not going to lose it to a quarterback as you see Haynes. Come off the field and no surprise with a shuffled offensive line. And Brent Venables wants to blitz anyway. And that time you see the three-time state high school power lifting champion. He's the one delivering the blow. The blitz gets home. So Haynes exits. And here comes the punt group. Although it looks like Wake Forest will allow as much time to come off the clock as they possibly can. And limit the amount of time that Clemson and I think if will the Tigers, have. And I think if the Tigers had the wind... I think Dabble may have played this a little differently. They will get the ball to begin the second half. Will Clemson, and I think if he was going with the wind, he may have taken that timeout, salvage a little bit more time. But if there's any question, and you asked me in the open an hour ago, how do you expect Clemson to respond? This is what I thought we would see. You know, this is a veteran team. This is a team that's played on the biggest of stages last season, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama to the very end, and that leadership's come back. And you've seen their kind of, I think, emotional response tonight. Yeah, I would say if you were a Clemson fan, we talked about this earlier, you're coming off of a brutal loss last yes. week. That's a hard loss to get over. And you are a decided favorite in a road game where you know the atmosphere is not going to be anything like it is in Death Valley. You want to see your team respond and come out, you know, kind of quote-unquote ready to play. Well, Clemson was ready to play yeah. to start tonight's it's game. It's a hard loss, but it almost, it's a stinging loss because you knew you had three or four plays that if you just converted one of them, a third and one or a fourth and one or a red zone, even if you just settled for a field goal, I think it just stung this week, and these guys could not wait to get back on the field and flush those plays. Now it's Artavis Scott back, but he allows the punt to roll inside the 15-yard line. Will roll down to about the 12 yard line. Week 11, Monday Night Football. The matchup starts at 8 15 Eastern on ESPN from Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. The 6 and 3 Texans taking on the 7 and 2 Raiders. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. The AFC playoff picture below that line is Brock Heward. Making things clear for the audience, which we always appreciate. Oakland and Denver, they lead the wild card race. The top four teams are the four respective division leaders. Sean Watson will take a knee, and that will take us to halftime. And coming up, stay tuned for our halftime report. You will hear Allison Williams with a chat with Dabo Sweeney coming up. She'll ask Dabo about his team's readiness for tonight's game. Clemson, 28-10, they lead at half time. For Adnan Burke, Danny Cannell, Joey Galloway in the studio. Welcome back. You're watching College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. 
It's the ACC on ESPN. The crowd is thinned out a bit on the hill as Clemson did their work in the first quarter specifically. They've got a 28 to 10 lead and they'll start the third, third quarter with the football in just a moment. Bob Schusen, Brock Hewitt, Allison Williams here in Winston-Salem. The response you were hoping for from Clemson, you certainly saw in the first quarter coming off of that emotional loss last week to Pitt. They kind of let Wake Forest back in the game a bit in the second quarter, but I would think all in all, your impressions of the first half have to be positive if you're yeah. Dabo Sweeney. Championship response. You fumbled a punt, turned a little of the momentum. You had one bust defensively, not seven or eight like you did a week ago. And all in all, you love this first half to put you in position to go ahead and win your ACC division, which is what they came here to do. And last week, Deshaun Watson threw the ball 70 times. Puts up gaudy numbers, but you lose. You thought it was key for them to get back to the run game tonight, and they have. They have, and there's been some commitment. Obviously, a little bit of this is numbers driven by what Wake Forest is doing, but Wayne Gallman's on his way to, to breaking a Clemson all-time record, and that'd be his 16th 100-yard game of the season. He's only had four of them this year, not nearly as many as a season ago, and Deshaun got it going as well, and that one-two punch is going to benefit them greatly. We all know they can throw it. They've got weapons galore at every position with the receiving core. But being able to run it, being balanced offensively is, I think, going to be most advantageous down the stretch of the season and into a playoff run. A big first half for Wayne Gallman. The head coach, Dave Clawson, spoke with Allison a moment ago. Coach Clawson, I know it wasn't the start you wanted to this game, but what were some of the positives from the way the half ended that you tried to emphasize? Oh, the, the positive is, is that our team keeps fighting. I mean, we're playing a... A great football team. We've got to play at a really high level to stay in it with them. And I just love that our guys kept fighting and kept playing. And now we got a chance to get back in this thing in the third quarter. How do you think Kyle Kearns has done? He's doing okay. I mean, he scored 10 points. You know, we're 4 of 13. And uh, he's just got to make good decision. I, I mean, it's a tough team to have your first start as a redshirt freshman again. So, you know, we're, we've got to keep it simple and somewhat conservative. And uh, he made a great throw to Cam Serenay, and hopefully he'll make some throws in the second half. Okay, thanks. He's a program builder, yep. and he was very realistic about not only tonight's game, where his team is at, but where he thinks this program is and where it can get to and how long it should take to get there. And I know you appreciated that as much as anybody because you're not going to buy the coach top. You, you never have, and he was as transparent as you're going to get. He knew his margin for error was very slim tonight. And getting the turnover helped. Helped in the field position in the second quarter, but they've got to get some stops defensively. Davis Scott takes a knee. And again, at Fordham, starting 3-19, and eventually wins a conference title. Richmond, the same type of start. Finishes 26-12 and in his last three years there. Wins a couple of conference titles. And Bowling Green, below 500, but then wins the MAC before taking over at Wake Forest. Three and nine, his first two seasons at Wake Forest. Now, this season, six and four, and heading to a bowl. The only FBS coach with 10 win seasons and a conference championship at three different schools. Gallman runs through the arms of a couple of tacklers and picks up close to nine yards to start off the second half. But Wayne Gallman, he went to the same high school as Robert Kendichi. And Gallman so impressed the Clemson coaches when they went to recruit Kim Dietschy that they wanted him as well. And there was a thought that they only offered him a scholarship because they wanted to get Kim Dietschy as a package deal. But boy, has he shown that he was well worth the offer that they placed on him. And he picks up a first down here as Josh Akonye wrestles him down. And Dambo's going to tell you it's a numbers game. That it's what the defense does, run or pass. But that time, the extra safety came down, and they still ran it. And I love that commitment because when Gallman's going, this offense is nearly unstoppable. And he's over 100 for the 16th time in his career. Simple out thrown to Mike Williams. And that 16th, as I said, breaks the all-time record. And he is a redshirt junior. And much like Williams on the other side, two redshirt juniors that aren't going to come back to Clemson. Deshaun Watson, too. Loads of talent moving on to the NFL. Top recruiting classes have come in for Dabo. And if Dave Clawson's building his program and a program builder, Dabo's been pretty remarkable in Clemson as well. Zone read, and Gallman tries to break out of the pack and look at the strength to drag 235-pound linebacker Jabari Williams for a first down and about four additional yards. 
I guess the one added benefit maybe of less carries, less yards this year is going to be a little fresher down this stretch of a season. Such a workhorse a year ago as he broke the single season records, getting his opportunities tonight. Play action for Deshaun Watson. Well protected. Finds a window and finds Hunter Renfro up against the sideline. Plenty good enough for another Clemson first down. Jesse Bates made the stop, but that's a gain of 17. And you can't throw it any better than that. That is a deep over across the middle of the field. Got to get over the top of the linebackers, have enough steam to get in front of the safeties. Wide receiver hitch, and this time it snipped out. Brad Watson immediately came up. Met like Mike Williams for a loss of a yard. Be very interesting Tuesday night at 7 Eastern right here on ESPN to see the next top 25 rankings from the college football playoff committee. And could your Huskies end up being one of the major beneficiaries from the Louisville loss on Thursday night? Gallman inside the 30 yard line. And for Washington, what will they have to do to get into the top four? Do they still need the help? Or will maybe a win in that Apple Cup game against Washington State be enough now that Wazoo lost a game that's going to hurt them a yeah, bit to Colorado? I, yeah, I think that Apple Cup and then that Pac-12 championship is a huge benefit to them if they can get to that point. And they've got to play a whole lot better than they did a week ago. Or that'll just be a lot of hot air. Well, they're playing well tonight. They're up 17 to nothing against Arizona State. Three-man rush on third down. Rifling a throw to the sideline is Deshaun Watson, but he missed Deion Kane. So it will be fourth down. Wind at the back here, or rather into the wind for Dabo Sweeney. And looks like he's going to leave his offense on the field. Yeah, this is into a 20-mile-an-hour gust, and you can see he's not putting any air on it. You can't when you're throwing into this kind of wind, and that's a tight little corner route into the short side of the field as it is. I love his delivery. I think it's gotten better and better every year. He's a first rounder to me. Rather than attempting about a 47 yard field goal into the wind, here comes the blitz as Clemson goes for it. Watson under trouble and throws it away, which doesn't do much for you. So Clemson turns it over on downs. Josh Banks, Demetrius Kemp combined to pressure Deshaun Watson into the fourth down stop. And we're back at Wake Forest where Clemson has a 28 to 10 lead over the Demon Deacons early here in the third quarter. But Wake gets a third down stop. And now they've got field position at their own 29 yard line. Kyle Kearns delayed handoff to Kate Carney. And he's into the secondary. He's got a first down. Courtesy of that third down stop a moment ago, Brock. Yeah, it's a chess match. That's what protection and pass protection is. You see Wake Forest bringing their two linebackers up into the gap. Deshaun Watson in the, in the protection, unfortunately, just not there to deliver. Here's Carney. And he gets shut down at the line. Got some technical difficulties there with Brock's clicker. If we can get back to it, though, it's worth it. I always learn something. <laughs> That was a fourth down stop, pardon me. So now second down and nine for Well, trust me, it's pretty, it pretty good for Mike Elko. He put backers into the into the gaps, forcing Gallman to come in and squeeze his protection and leaving the edge rusher to come free. Delayed handoff again to Carney. Nothing there. Kendall Joseph waiting for him at left end, and now it will be third down and nine. And these are the tough spots. And if Mike Elko, D coordinator, can drop his blitzes, well, Brent Venables has an endless supply on his whiteboard. And he's even getting after his guys. We've been watching him on that sideline throughout that first half. He never, ever, ever settles for anything but top notch execution. And these are the downs and distances that he sure loves to heat up a young quarterback. Tigers show blitz. They rush only three and drop into coverage. And still. Kern's in trouble, and down he goes. Carlos Watkins trips him up. A three-man rush, and you can't keep the first team all ACC. Defensive tackle off the quarterback as Watkins gets a sack. And it's all hands, and that's why Carlos is the leading sacker on this team. Had his best year, Brent said. Coming into his redshirt senior year, got some losses on that D-line around him. He really had to step up his play and maturity. 
And that big boy getting his hands all over Josh Harris. He won immediately with the three-man rush and finished with his seventh sack. Artavis Scott has been the punt returner ever since Ray Ray McLeod fumbled the fair catch. And this, a knuckleball that bounces to the 20-yard line. And Scott, and he's out across the 32 when he's brought down. They'll never admit it, but Michigan and Ohio State actually love each other. Let's love. The game between Michigan and Ohio State, center stage for Jabril Peppers, as Michigan, if they can win that game, well, they'll be in the Big Ten championship game. If Ohio State wins that game and they're somehow able to corral Jabril Peppers, we'll keep our eyes on Penn State and what happens between Penn State and Rutgers tonight. What an opportunity that would be for James Franklin's team. Play action. Low throw, scooped up. McLeod out across the 40. To the 42 for 44, rather, for a gain of 12. I would expect, expect to see that tempo cranked up here. He started so fast. 21 first quarter points, execution off the charts. You would certainly, if you're Clemson, like to add a couple more touchdowns. And I think especially going into the win, do it with tempo. Gallman, quick trap handoff. He's across midfield. Caught from behind by Jesse Bates and Duke edge of four, but picked up close to eight yards. That's some good blocking right on the edge there. Jordan Leggett, we've hardly mentioned his name tonight, the tight end there for Clemson. Add him to the weapons. You got a big physical receiver. You got speedy receivers, a dynamic running back, a tight end that's willing to block. Goodness gracious. Gallman brought down. It will be third down at two and a half. Mark Kelly and Jabari Williams were both there to combine on the stop. And Clemson, they started off like a house of fire in the first quarter, but their last four drives have been shut down. Well, they've been in third downs a little different than this one. Third and two is ideal, but we've seen a lot of third and sevens. Duke edge of four. We haven't called his name a ton, but some good, I think, well-timed and schemed blitzes. Another one right here is they're trying to disguise and mess with that protection up front. It's a five-man rush. The slant knocked away. Jesse Bates got a hand in. And Deion Kane couldn't hold on. And now it's fourth down in about two and a half. But this time a little too close to midfield. It looks like for Dabo Sweeney to feel comfortable going for it. Bates a good one. I mean, you talk about a, a young guy, a redshirt freshman. Five interceptions leads this team. And what, he, what I've seen with him, especially in that play indicative, you're going to run that slant, you're going to do it again and again, then I'm going to come down and I'm going to collision it and make a play on third down. That's why there's, that's been four consecutive possessions now. Their ability to make those clutch plays on third and fourth down. Used all punches one on a bounce to the 15-yard line. And immediately wrapped up and thrown back was Jesse Bates. Wake Forest has the football when we come back. They've scored the last 10. College football brought to you by Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. And USAA, insurance banking and investments tailored for the military community. These were selfies on the Wake Forest campus yesterday when it was 81 degrees yesterday afternoon. And what a beautiful campus it is here in Winston-Salem. Now, tonight here at BB&T Field, temperatures have fallen into... The low 40s, but it doesn't mean that we can't find a little cheerleader up there in her Tiger outfit to take commands. That might have been the best selfie we've taken all year. Worst starting field position for Wake Forest, and Matt Colburn was able to grind out about six yards on first down. She's our favorite. Hanging tough. Look, and stick out your tongue for the first selfie, listens to the command. Second selfie, smile, hold your hand up, listens to the command. Kind of doomed, though. If you're starting at like six months with selfies, <laughs> there's only one way that's going the rest of your life. Second down and four. Midway through the third. Again, Kyle Carnes. Red shirt freshman quarterback making his first ever start in place of John Wolford. Find Couldn't go tonight. Find me a creative play. Find me an opportunity to get Clemson to bust one of those coverages. 
Edwards, then a handoff, and right up the middle goes Colbert into the secondary. A first down out to the 42-yard line. Cordray Tankersley eventually made the stop, but not before Matt Colburn picked up 23. Well, it's that right side of the line. It's Ryan Anderson. It's Osterhag in there, the backup for Haynes, and they get an excellent push. Play action. Hearns, long throw to the sideline. And getting loose is Chuck Wade. He's into the secondary as well. Breaks a tackle. Wade into the red zone. And it's first and goal for Wake Forest at the Clemson 8-yard line. Well, it wasn't quite anything terribly creative to go against Brett Venable's crew to try to get them to bust. It's just a bubble screen trying to throw the vertical off of it. But a good decision there by Kearns to come to the check down and not force it. Tempo for the Deeks. First and goal. Colburn. Moves the pile. About the five-yard line where it will be second down and goal. And this is set up to throw the vertical down the field. And instead, Kearns does the smart thing. Just give it to my guy in space. The broken tackle there from Dorian O'Daniel. Daniel. And another explosive play. This has been the difference. That explosive play to Serenay earlier set up the touchdown. That explosive play to Wade sets up the Demon Deacons inside the own 10 now. Play action. Kearns rolling right into the end zone. Broken up. And Saranai had a chance at it. Good coverage by a true freshman, Trey Lamar. Mike Linebacker running with the tight end. And this was a dart. This is a throw that I don't think Kearns is making in the first quarter. And there was one spot. There's two Clemson defenders. You can see perfectly with this shot, the window, and that ball's on him. And that's a play that Cam's got to make, and he's saying, man, I've not had a quarterback put that on me this season that fast. Big play here. Third down and goal as Wake Forest tries to get back in the game. Kearns, slant, thrown behind a receiver. Chuck Wade, who has a walk-in touchdown, and he knows it if Kyle Kearns could have led him out in front and given him a catchable ball. And it's the inside pressure. It just it, it just affects the passer enough that in time Kearns is going to have his eyes and awareness down the field. And Clawson knows that he threw as good a throw as you could possibly make on second. But that pressure got in his face. It affected his follow through. The throws behind. And Wake Forest has to settle for three. So Mike Weaver from short range to try and make it a two score game. He's got it. Did Clemson take their foot off the gas pedal enough to get Dave Clawson's team back in it? Brock a red zone trip and Wake ends up settling for three. Can't throw it any better to Serenay there through a very tight window. Pressure by Carlos Watkins into the legs of the young redshirt freshman Kearns. Forced that throw to be on the back shoulder of Wade. Allison telling us on the sidelines that Chuck Wade came over. Serenay came over to the young quarterback and said, that's on me. I, I got to find a way to finish it. I got to find a way to help out my young quarterback against this defense. Going right into the teeth of it. And opportunities there in the red zone with the win to finish. We can't quite deliver. Artavis Scott deep to receive the kick once again. And this one about three yards deep. And he hesitated for a moment. Now brings it out and gets right about to the spot where he would have been had he taken a knee at the 25-yard line? Let's go back to Adnan. This game was 28 to nothing at one point, Adnan, but it's 13 unanswered points, at least to this point, for Wake Forest as Wayne Gallman picks up five yards for Clemson here. Again, Clemson traveling into the wind, and you will see from these numbers here, the wind has been a major factor in this game. And not many shots down the field for Deshaun tonight. Really going both ways. Looking for a crease, and again, with a nice jump cut, finding some room as Gallman. He's brought down at the 34, 
Yard short of the first down, so it would be third down and one. And Wake Forest get a three and out and get the football back down by two scores now. They're aggressively coming with a blitz. And no room. Gallman gets shut down. Gang tackle. Grant Dawson, Wendell Dunn were there to bring him down a yard short of the first down. Now it's fourth down and one. And here comes the punt group again for Clemson. And you called it pre-snap. They're getting into those gaps. That's been one of the adjustments for, for Mike Elko, defensive coordinator, and I think he's a good one. And I always judge that by your ability to make adjustments and look at Dave Clawson on the sidelines. He's watching it. He sees the penetration from Dunn. They have filled every gap with that stunt and blitz. Right now, that aggressive nature for Wake Forest has changed the game. It's changed the momentum of the game. They were on their heels for the first three possessions. They're now dictating defensively. Fair catch called for by Jesse Bates and fielded at the Wake Forest 33-yard line. Only a 33-yard punt into the wind. And this college football season, stream every game live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Download the app or visit watchespn.com today. My recommendation, if you haven't already, download that app before next weekend. Uh, yes. That'd be beneficial. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we got a think big one. about the games that we have everywhere, affecting every conference and conference championships, trips to championship games, all on the line next weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. A little trap handoff. And a gain of a couple to Chuck Wade. Let's check in with Allison. Well, guys, it's not loud here tonight, right? But the Wake Forest offensive line is still struggling to hear Kyle Kearns. He's just not being loud enough. I heard some of the guys say he's using his inside voice. They can't really hear that cadence. So I know it's a tough spot for a kid with limited experience coming out there and making his first start tonight. But he's got to try and be more authoritative and have a little bit more command of the offense out there and just really speak up. Comes with confidence. Comes with reps. It's about the only thing I could do well. Play action. Under some pressure is Kearns. This time he scrambles to the sideline with a flag down. He may have lost a yard on the scramble. We'll have to check the penalty marker as well. And Dabo Sweeney immediately says, take the penalty and move Wake back. Holding number 78 offense. 10-yard penalty, second down. That's Tyler Hayward, the fifth-year senior at left guard. Check this out, Bob. You, you like my clicker when I go to it. Now, when the quarterback breaks the pocket, you are allowed to chuck that receiver. But I think that's a little early with that kind of contact. Clemson gets away with it. Get the holding call. Pretty significant play as far as real estate goes here. So we're near the end of the third quarter. And now second and 18. Kearns doesn't feel the rush coming from the weak side. And down he goes back at the 15. Mark Fields, corner blitz from the quarterback's blind side. And there is a redshirt freshman making his first career start, just not feeling the rush. That's exactly right. And we can talk about voice and command and body language and all of those things. But most importantly, I've got to have a bit of an awareness now. He should have been picked up. Justin Haran there, the redshirt sophomore left tackle. He had his assignment. He had his eyes on it. Mark Fields and the quickness and the agility of the corner beating the big tackle. Significant couple snaps. I'm not sure what's going on with the play clock as Matt Colburn bobs and weaves just to get a few yards to buy some real estate for the punt group. The play clock went all the way down to zero, jumped up to 15. You can see it maybe on our screen here and also inside the stadium. There have been a few moments tonight where the play clock has done a dance and it didn't disrupt Wake that time. Here comes Maggio to punt. Well, that's going to be a moment that Dave Clawson's going to look back and say, man, we force another third down. We have the win. We have some opportunities, and you just can't. A team that has not been penalized this year, second best in the ACC, a couple critical penalties set him back. And this has got to be a big punt for Maggio. And it is just that. What a kick by Maggio. Wow. Over the head of Scott. This might get all the way to the end zone. 
It broke the play for a touchback. Just that close to Wake being able to down it at the one-yard line. What a kick for Maggio. An 80-yard punt. Welcome back to College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton by Hilton. 28-13, Clemson has the lead over Wake Forest. Late third quarter, Bob Wischusen alongside Brock Hewitt and Allison Williams down on the field. We talked about the response for Clemson out of the loss to Pitt last week, and boy, did they ever respond in the first quarter. A different story since. Zone read to Sean Watson. Stood up after a gain of eight. Three things I need to see. I need to see the best players get involved, and that's Deshaun Watson, and that is a little bit of quarterback run, and I think he has got to do more of that. I got to see Mike Williams. He was such a factor early in this game, and I would sure love to see a shot down the field. Wake Forest is in the gaps. They are the ones dictating. Time for you to offensively to turn that around, and you do the dictating. Gallman breaks a tackle as the first down. I think there's more diversity in this run game to be had. And I know they are a tempo team, but there's some big, aggressive, physical fellas up front for Dabo Sweeney. They've got a big, heavy package where they bring Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins in on the other side. And, heck, I wouldn't mind seeing that on early downs and not have to just wait to third down. I think there's a little more two-back. I think there is just more mix in the run game for Clemson than just lining up in this zone read, and there's such an inside zone. But I would just like to see a little more diversity. Zone read for Watson. He's down the sideline. Deshaun Watson out of bounds. That should end the third quarter. A big run to the 45-yard line of Wake Forest for the Clemson quarterback. A gain of 23. Dabo borderline bristled with me when I said, why isn't Deshaun running a little bit more? Does he want to just you know, show everybody he can play at the next level? He said he came here to run. Our quarterbacks come here to run. Well, he better run this November and December. Because if this team's going to run back to that championship game they were a year ago, I think number four's presence in the run game is going to be an awfully big part of it. Five carries, 43 yards, and two touchdowns on the ground for Deshaun Watson as we head to the fourth. Well, the work that Clemson had to do to come from behind. And off that pit loss last week, re-established themselves in top 14. They did that through the first quarter plus. As we head to the fourth, running left, and getting shut down. Mark Kelly brings down Wayne Gallman. That's a loss of a yard. Wake Forest, 13 points after falling behind, 28 to nothing. So, number four, Brock, looked like number four to start the game. Yep. And then it's almost like they took the foot off the gas pedal and let Wake Forest back in it just a bit. And they got to go. And they've got to finish strong here, something they've been able to do in fourth quarters. Play action fake to Sean Watson. Bullets won. Unable to scoop it up was Hunter Renfro. Now it's third down and 11, but a tall order for Wake in the fourth quarter, down by two scores, and now they are the team going into the win. All of the scoring drives have been with the wind now heading in the direction where it's at Clemson's back. This has been the difference down. And this is trying to get a picture here. I like this timing. And they have won those third downs. You've seen the last five. They've done it with different pressures, trying to get a good look at what they're doing coverage-wise. Two deep safeties, only a four-man rush. As a result, Watson has all day to throw. Comes underneath to Leggett, who reaches out, and he's got the first down. Brad Watson could not keep Jordan Leggett from getting to the line to gain. And he may just be my favorite player on this team. I mean, you just put on the tape, and he is sacrificial in every way. He was a Mac Mackey finalist a year ago, one of three. He's a John Mackey Award semifinalist this year. The numbers aren't off the charts because they distribute the ball to everybody. Here comes the blitz, running away from it and sliding down as Deshaun Watson for a two-yard game. But when called upon, and that is a smart move by Watson, protect yourself. But when called upon, Leggett is just so steady. And I love the story that Dabo told us yesterday about Jordan Leggett, and that was Deshaun threw, threw the critical pick in the red zone. Everybody knows that. It goes on his ledger as interception number three, but it was Leggett, the Texas coaches, the Texas teammates. And so that was on me. I got held up in my route. I set us back. I caused 
that failure to come and just accepting that responsibility and that accountability. Big reason for this team's success. Dahlman, blockers out in front. Brought down at the 26. It will be third down and two. Jesse Bates came up to make the tackle for Wake. When they're going, this is number seven time. This is usually Mike Williams' time in these down distances, and you've seen the success for Wake on these third downs. Called the touchdown earlier, third and two. You're going to come up and press. He wins on the slants. He wins on the hitches. He wins on the go routes. Now watch and see if this safety comes over the top to protect against that weapon. Blitz coming off the edge. And Gallman brought down a yard shy of the first down. So it is fourth down and one at the 25-yard line. A field goal here would make it a three-score game again with the wind at Clemson's back. They're one for three on fourth down, and instead they're going to go for it. Uh, this was the down and distance a week ago. It was third and one. It was fourth and one. It was these run situations that you're leaning into the overall talent of your group to get it done. It looks like a play clock started to go haywire again, so now the officials reset the play clock. Clemson going forward on fourth and one. You better get a hat on a half. Wake Forest did a nice job getting on the edges in the run game. Quarterback draw. Watson, and he's got it. Brought down by Jabari Williams, but not before he picked up the first down. And that again is not a by the book play. But the by the book play is to go up three scores to kick the field goal, right, especially as you trust your field goal kicker. But we saw a non by the book play earlier with the onside kick, and that is a statement that we are going to be aggressive in those situations. Again, the play clock is all over the map, but it's not affecting the tempo of this Clemson offense. It's not affecting Wayne Gallman inside the five. First and goal, Tigers at about the three. That was Josh Oconier there, and he's filling in for Ryan Janvey in the safety, and they desperately miss their captain. Got him back into that defense with 330 career tackles, and that time Janvey goes high, and you see the power and the quickness of Goldman Run right through that tackle. C.J. Fuller in the game at tailback. He gets the call to the one-yard line. Josh Banks. Was able to stop a touchdown. It will be second down and goal. You see Gallman find a way to get back on the field. He's got a nose for this. Three of them a week ago against Pitt. He's got 21 carries for 160 yards and a touchdown tonight, helping out Deshaun Watson. They have been a terrific one-two punch in the run game. One-on-one -on -one to the bottom. Gallman walks into the end zone with a Clemson touchdown. Short on the other side, I showed you Kate, Kate Carney running through some tackles. Tiger high five and loves it. That's going to be awfully difficult now for Wake to come back. But it's just one-on-one -on -one situations. When you get into the goal line, you have unblocked defenders. It's Markel Lee, the linebacker. He's right there. That head of steam from Goldman. He has a nose. He feels it. And that acceleration runs right through another tackle. 35-13. A 13-play, 80-yard touchdown drive. That took five and a half minutes. Second touchdown run of the game for Wayne Gallman. We are back with today's Good Hands Play, brought to you by Allstate. The best hands on the field belong to Mike Williams. And they've gone away from that matchup at times to be committed to running the ball, but just about any time you get a one-on-one -on -one situation, there is such a comfort level. Back to back now, 1,000 yard seasons. He missed the 2015 season after one game, but 2014 over 1,000 yards, now over 1,000 yards, becomes the third Tiger to do that. Two 1,000 yard receiving seasons. He's going to be a good one at the next level. Understands how to use that body, crafty enough to run those slants and get inside of people. Difference maker. Only Rod Gardner and Sammy Watkins, two other first round draft choices in Clemson history. 2,000 yard seasons now. Mike Williams in that club. Tonight, after a full day of college football, catch Sports Center at night. Bucci and Anderson. And of all the gridiron highlights, as well as the NBA, NHL, college basketball day as well. NFL news heading into an NFL Sunday tomorrow. Sports Center at night. 
after USC UCLA on ESPN. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And how much more interesting Oof. does that USC UCLA game become with Utah going down to Colorado? Swing pass to Cade Carney. He picks up nine. Watch that game tonight, and you'll be watching Sam Darnold, a good one. A redshirt freshman, much like we're looking at a redshirt freshman getting his start tonight, and Kyle Kearns. But when you find a young guy to build around, and we'll see if Kyle can do that and use this experience to move forward. To play Helton has it at USC, and Sam Darnold, one of the real young gems in college football that I can't wait to watch over the next few years. Carney right at the first down line to gain. But it looks like he's about a half yard shy. So let's take a look at some news and notes today. Ohio State and Michigan both survived their respective games and set up the game next week at noon. But all the way at the bottom of the screen, Colorado, Washington State. What a season it has been for the Buffs. Fantastic. Mike McIntyre. I mean, I, I can't discredit Nick Saban what he's done with Jalen Hurts and his freshman quarterback and the coach of the year. I can never punish somebody just because they have so much success. But Mike McIntyre out of nowhere turning that program at Colorado has got to be on that list for coach of the year. Third down and one. Carney's got the first down. Out across the 40, close to the 41 yard line. Do you give Florida any chance? No. I mean any chance? No. Against Alabama? No. I thought I might be able to finish the sentence before you answered, but such as it is, no. Their defense is, is fantastic. They just they can't complement it with any kind of consistent offense. Hit a couple home runs today, and a big one down there for Jim McElwain to win his side of that SEC. Carney again. I was listening to Mike and Mike the other day, and I heard Greeny say this one. I think I've got it right, that Mel Kuyper's got his big board, so his top 32 first-round draft picks as he slots them heading into the April draft, and he has six Alabama Crimson Tide defensive players on his big board. That's not bad. Six. And Florida's got a couple guys on their defense that can <laughs> That's play. That's unbelievable. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of NFL dudes on that field for the SEC title. And maybe not a lot of offense. Zone read. Three yards for Carney as Carlos Watkins grabs him and throws him back. Well, a very similar rush chart to the one we saw against Florida State a few weeks ago. And Dave Clawson knows what he can do and what he can't do. Right, Jim McElwain knows with his offense through 11 games what they can and they cannot do. And there's been a commitment to Cade Carney running it straight ahead. And that is a true freshman, not a redshirt freshman, but a true freshman that's got a lot of good football ahead of him here, too. Well, Dave Clawson promised Cade Carney that he would be a running back. That's why he came. To Wake Forest. Under pressure, no chance for Kyle Carnes. The blitz came, Kendall Joseph came through first. Richard Yergin joined him as well. And it will be a fourth down punt for Wake Forest. That is sack number four for Clemson. And that is a nightmare for a young quarterback. You can see the eyes downfield, but not an awareness of who's coming. And he will feel that one tomorrow. Tough kid, love how he gets up, takes it. That neck's going to be sore tomorrow with that jolting hit from Joseph, the middle linebacker. Maggio into the wind. And this one will not go far. Takes a sideways hop out of bounds. Just inside the 35-yard line. Only a 33-yard punt. Clemson ball when we return. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. Book at Hampton.com for a guaranteed discount. And in part by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. It is cold and windy here in Winston-Salem, but some brave souls trying to stay warm as Wake Forest trails Clemson. 7.08 to go in the fourth quarter. 35-13, the Tigers have the football back. And pretty good field position at their own 34-yard line. And they look to add to the night with their run game. On the dive, it's Adam Choice. And he's out to the 46-yard line, a gain of 12. Adam Choice, redshirt sophomore. 
He had a torn ACL midway through his true freshman season two years ago and had to redshirt last year because he wasn't fully recovered. Now Nick Schuessler gets an opportunity to play quarterback as well as looks like Deshaun Watson's night is done. Another handoff to Adam Choice, and he picks up two. Smart. And I'll tell you this, I hope the Clemson fans don't take any of this for granted, how hard this is. Now another 10-win season for Dabo. Now another Atlantic Division Championship and setting yourself up to play in the ACC Championship and what he has done and what he has built here. Don't take it for granted because it's not easy to do. And the Deshaun Watson's help and the star players in these recruiting classes is a big part of it, but developing the culture and really the fun and the enjoyment that these guys have, that accountability I pointed to earlier that I love so much of Jordan Leggett texting the coaches and players and, and really owning the responsibility. Just don't take this run for granted. Another handoff to Choice, and let's go down to Allison. Well, Brock mentioned a key word in talking about this Clemson team. Fun. I've spent the last 12 weeks on the sidelines every Saturday, and I, I always try to get a feel for the personality, the energy of a team. And watching these Clemson Tigers, whether it's their defense or their offense, the way they interact, the way they talk to each other, I have seen more smiling, more laughing. Uh, they just seem like that. They are having fun out there. And uh, I know winning is fun, and that makes a big difference, but you really get the sense that they love being out there together, and it shows. Well, they're going to win an Atlantic Division championship in the ACC with this win tonight. An injury timeout, Paris Black shaken up for Wake Forest, so we'll step aside for just a moment. Paris Black for Wake Forest was able to head to the sideline on his own, so he looks okay. 35-13, Clemson has the lead, so they are five minutes and 42 seconds away from the fourth time that they will be in the ACC championship game under Dabo Sweeney. As they went last year in 2011 and in 2009, they're only moments away from clinching officially the ACC Atlantic, but most importantly, staying in that top four at the very least of the college football playoff rankings because this has been an impressive performance on the road tonight. Nick Schusler and now looking for a snap that never arrives. So now it will be third down and eight. And that was the big fellow, the right guard there, Maverick Morris, guy that rotates in for Dabo, feeling some of that gap pressure that you have seen from Wake Forest in those third down situations. And Maverick just flinching and reacting to that stunt that was coming his way. I kind of like that name, though. Maverick Morris. Sounds like a Clemson right guard, doesn't it? Schusler with a draw. And about two yards shy of the first down, Adam Choice is brought down. It'll be fourth down in a couple. With only a few weeks left in the regular season, we will have the exclusive reveal. The college football playoff top 25 rankings Tuesday at 7 Eastern right here on ESPN. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom. As always, it is available streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Well, not nearly the chaos of a weekend ago where nobody wanted to win. In that top six or seven, just about everybody fell, and Thursday night it was Louisville, and these Clemson Tigers watched it. I'm sure there was a learning lesson for all of them that you better bring it. You go on the road, you better be sharp, and they came out incredibly fast tonight against an opponent that if you could do that to would really set them back. Clemson will take a delay of game penalty here before they kick it back to Wake Forest with four minutes to go. And Brock, you do start to put, as we were talking about while we were away a moment ago, some of the numbers in perspective. You mentioned the sixth consecutive 10-win season, but how about the road record? Unblemished. 10 in a row away from Death Valley for Clemson. Now, Oklahoma is about to win their 11th consecutive game as they are putting it on West Virginia. Oklahoma, when that game goes final, if they hold on and win, they will tie Alabama at 11 in a row away from home for the longest active streak in FBS, but right behind 10 in a row is Clemson with this win tonight. So when you're winning that consistently away from your home field, you belong in the college football playoff. Bates will let this hop into the end zone. 
And it will come out to the 20 yard line for Wake. 3.53 to go. The celebration will be on on the Clemson sideline as we wind the clock down. Uh, to the detriment of cholesterol levels everywhere, we are in the home of Krispy Kreme Donuts. Are you sure? This is where Krispy Kreme was founded, right here in Winston-Salem. Much to my and my belt buckle's delight. That might have been a backwards pass. Matt Colburn able to scoop it up and pick up about four yards for Wake Forest. As Clemson is now only three minutes and 40 seconds away from officially clinching their fourth division title under Dabo Sweeney. Well, save for Alabama, we've seen both of these teams, Michigan, Ohio State. We've had a chance to see just about everybody now. We haven't seen Oklahoma, and they are a dangerous animal here down the stretch. But we've seen just about everybody else. Clemson looked like a number four, top four team in your eyes? Yes. Jet sweep. Chuck Wade, first down. If only because, and again, I know this varies week to week, because sometimes in a long season, teams aren't going to be at their best. Yep. And the best teams find a way to win when they're not at their best, as Ohio State did today. Because we saw Michigan against Michigan State, and Michigan State looked like a team that fought as hard as they could, but a below 500 team that wilted and eventually kind of got steamrolled by a better opponent. That wasn't the case today. But we have seen Wake Forest on film and in person Play defense this year. That's right. And Clemson, another end around. And this time, nowhere to go for Chuck Wade, thrown down well behind the line by Richard Yergin. But we have seen this Wake Forest defense look pretty good against teams that were in the college football playoff discussion as the year has gone on, like Florida State, like right. Louisville. And Clemson, don't you think tonight has done to this defense something that not many opponents yes. have this year? Yeah, and, and I love the fact they had a season high in rushing yards. And I, I think those are going to be the two determining factors, their ability to run it, because De Deshaun's going to get his, and the receivers are going to make their plays. But to me, this this team, if they're going to take the, the, the last step, I mean, they've taken every step in all their wins and their conference championships, and last year all the way to the championship game. They've got to run the ball, and then they've got they've got to do what Wake Forest does defensively. I was going to ask make you, somebody earn it. Do you think Clemson's defense is good enough when push comes to shove? Maybe not to beat Alabama, but to win a college football playoff game and get to a national championship game again. They cannot have the amount of mental errors they've had at some crucial times, and that Pittsburgh tape is one that Wake Forest could not use in leverage. They couldn't. They don't have the offensive personnel, the veteran players on this side of the ball to really take advantage and test the, I think, mental aptitude of that defense down in and down out. That was a backwards pass, and it was sniffed out by Dorian O'Daniel. But there's no doubt they've got the horses. And then Bullware, Kendall Joseph, and Dorian O'Daniel, the guys up front that we've document, documented, Watkins now with seven and a half sacks on the year. They've got the horses. But they just can't hurt themselves defensively with busts that you saw in that Pittsburgh game. Right, some breakdowns against Florida State late in that game. they got to do it down in and down out. Again, putting Alabama aside because they have a complete team, what are the other teams that are in the college football playoff discussion that you think could most take advantage of the weaknesses for Clemson defensively? What will be a bad matchup sure. for them? Well, I think uh, Michigan and everything that they do with all their veterans in all phases, I think an Urban Meyer and his staff are tremendous. I think most of those teams, they get to an ACC championship game, there may be an opportunity for Virginia Tech to do at least some of those things offensively and yep. some of the perimeter skill to test them. Flag down on the punt, 34 seconds to go, so this is a mere formality at this point. I think we've lost our referee's microphone. Holding against Clemson, so this just adjusts where they put the ball for victory formation. And the Tigers officially clinching the Atlantic Division title. But I'll, I'll say this to you, Bobby, and we talked about this last week. Alabama's complete in every face. Offense, defense, special teams, I, they, you know, and obviously they're, I think, a, a number one by a long ways. The committee told us after the last rankings that two through six were awfully close. Yes. And two through six have some tremendous strengths. They also have some vulnerabilities. And I would now add Oklahoma going on the road and embarrassing West Virginia tonight into that conversation in the top six as well. And their offense and Baker Mayfield has found it. They are electric. They can score on anybody. And if they can protect their vulnerability, their defense, 
And they've got an opportunity to get right back in that mix. It was actually holding against Wake Forest, so this puts the ball out at about the 37 yard line. So. And if I'm Dabo, heading back home tonight, I'm awfully proud of the way my team came out and responded right away, stepped on the gas. I love the way that they ran the ball. You know, I think he made conscious deci decisions with the onside kick, with a third down run, with a fourth and one run. I think he made conscious decisions to continue to step on the pedal, which he's going to want to do here down the stretch of the season. And number four has got to use his legs. He told us point blank, you come here to play quarterback, you're going to run. And Deshaun's got to continue to run down the stretch of this season for them, in my opinion, to be at their very best in the, in the dump for the Atlantic Championship. And deservedly so. Four times now under Dabo Sweeney. It is a division title. Check that, the fifth under Dabo Sweeney. I got it, that's cold. <laughs> yes, it is. But you'll take it every time. Don't take it for granted, Clemson. You had a heck of a coach who's built a culture and has done it consistently. They did share a championship game or championship in the division at one time, but lost a tiebreaker to Florida State. So this is the fourth time that one of their division titles will result in a trip to the ACC championship game under Dabo. So Clemson wins at 35-13, and Allison Williams is down there with the winning coach. Thank you very much. First of all, congratulations, you. your fifth Atlantic Division title. What are you most proud of for this team who came out in a very unfamiliar spot, coming off a loss, and responded the way they did? Well, we had not had many losses in the last few years, but when we have, we've always responded. And, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, my message to them tonight was they had a great opportunity to, uh, to teach. Uh, a lot of eyes on them. You know, life's about how you respond. I don't care what it is that happens to you, whether you lose a football game or get fired from your job or your wife leaves you. It's all about how you respond. And I'm just proud of a bunch of young men that despite all the stuff that they live around and have to hear, man, they came out and responded in a great way. And, um, you know, we're division champs. That's what we set out to do. Uh, so we got an opportunity to go play for a back-to-back -back ACC title. So I'm just really proud of them. I appreciate our fans. Our fans were awesome. Um, and uh, hey, we're, we'll, we'll enjoy this one and got another big one next week. A season high in rushing yards for your offense. What stood out to you with the run game tonight? Well, we did a great job up front. You know, coaches did an outstanding job. You know, this was a team that we knew was going to play a lot of coverage on us. They were going to pick their spots as far as some of their run stop and blitzes. But, uh, you know, we just won at the point of attack, and Wayne Gallman was awesome. I made him captain tonight for a reason. So, uh and then, and then Deshaun, you know, Deshaun was kind of the equalizer for us when, when they outnumbered us a few times and kept them honest. Uh, we hit some big plays, but overall, just the way we started the game on defense and offense and setting the tempo uh, was, was really the tone for the night. Coach, I'm cold and I'm dry. How cold are you now after that Gatorade battle? I am really cold. My feet are cold. <laughs> Mine but too. Was, but it was sweet. It was sweet. It was sweet. Go warm up. Thank Go you. Warm. Thank you. Congratulations to Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers as they are headed under Dabo to their fourth ACC championship game in a couple of weeks and maybe the college football playoff. Who knows? Clemson wins it in lopsided fashion. So long from Winston-Salem. Back to Adnan in the studio.